Summary of the Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Ortsy The French Revolution is well underway in France in 1792. Every hour, the guillotine does its ghastly work, quickly killing hundreds of traitorous aristocrats. Every evening, thousands of French people meet at the barricades of Paris to watch the foolish aristocrats try to escape the city. Recently, an Englishman who goes by the name the Scarlet Pimpernel has successfully taken several royal families to safety in Britain. As a result, everyone in the French guard is on high alert. Bibbit, a very skilled guard, checks each cart that comes up to the barrier he is responsible for. When an old hag pulls up and says she won't be back the next day because her grandson has smallpox, Bibbit quickly moves out of the way so she can pass. He is afraid he might get the dangerous disease. Right away after that, a captain of the guard shows up looking for the cart and the hag. The Scarlet Pimpernel, who has been on the run, is in the cart with the Comtesse de Tournay and her royal children. Across the English Channel in Dover, a honest man named Mr. Jellyband opens his comfortable inn, the Fisherman's Rest, to tourists and fishers who are hungry and thirsty. Mr. Jellyband is a royalist and an anti-revolutionist, just like most English people. He fully supports the Scarlet Pimpernel and his brave efforts to protect innocent nobles from the murdering devils across the channel. Lord Anthony and Sir Andrew, two of the Pimpernel's valued men, stop at the fishermen's rest on their way to bring the Comtesse de Tournay and her children over from France. Mr. Jellyband is happy to see them. Sir Percy Blakeney, one of England's richest men, and his wife, the beautiful and stylish Lady Blakeney, who used to be Marguerite Saint Just of France, come to Jellyband's Inn to rest and eat. Armand, Lady Blakeney's brother and a French citizen who is an ardent Republican, will be going back to his country with the tide. The Comtesse hates Lady Blakeney. Lady Marguerite Street just helped kill the Marquis de Saint Cyr and his whole royal family in France, so the Comtesse hates her on behalf of all lords. Even Sir Percy doesn't like his wife because she helped kill the nobleman and his family. Sir Percy's pride in his noble background makes him not want to love Marguerite as much as he does, so he treats her badly behind her back. Marguerite also dislikes Sir Percy because she thinks she is the smartest woman in Europe and he is hopelessly stupid. She often sharpens her ready wits at his expense. What this smart woman doesn't know is that her husband is really the Scarlet Pimpernel and that his brainless image is just a show. But Sir Percy's pride and anger at his wife are real, and they have almost killed his love for her. As an accredited agent of France, Chauvelin tricks Marguerite into helping him find the Scarlet Pimpernel in exchange for her brother's life. Someone found out that Armand was working with the Scarlet Pimpernel. With Marguerite's help, he will be freed. As soon as Marguerite finds a ring in Sir Percy's study that is inscribed with a scarlet pimpernel, an English flower and the name of a man, she understands that her shallow husband and the bright hero are the same person. She betrayed her husband, whose love she had sworn to win back, without meaning to. With Sir Andrew's help, she goes to France to tell him. It is almost time for Chauvelin to cross the channel to save the Comte de Tournay and Armand from the gallows. Sir Percy has already done this. If Sir Percy is caught, he will almost certainly die, and Marguerite is fully to blame. The wrong she did was very base, she knew that helping Chauvelin might kill the Scarlet Pimpernel, but she did it anyway to save Armand. She needs to make amends for her mistake if Sir Percy ever wants to love her again. When Marguerite and Sir Andrew finally get to France after a bad storm stops them, they go straight to the chat gris which is where the Scarlet Pimpernel and his men agreed to meet. Chauvelin knows about this meeting place because he stole letters from Sir Andrew in Dover. When Marguerite and Sir Andrew get to the squalid French inn, they are told by Brogard, the owner, that Sir Percy has already been there and is now looking for a horse and cart, but he will be back soon. Sir Andrew goes to look for him, while Marguerite hides in an attic room and waits. Chauvelin shows up first, dressed as a priest. When Sir Percy shows up, he is shocked to see this holy guest. Chauvelin can't catch Sir Percy because he gives him pepper that looks like a pinch of snuff and then sneaks out the door. Chauvelin is very angry. 
His friend Sir Percy is going to a place called Pear Blanchard's hut, but he doesn't know how to get there. Sir Percy was seen in town talking to a Jewish man, but he has since left with his horse and cart, according to one of Chauvelin's reliable men. However, a second man, a dirty and cowardly Jewish man, has agreed to help for a price. He knows everything about Calais and the Pear Blanchard's hut. He can also show them how to get to Sir Percy. Marguerite follows Chauvelin and his men as they leave with the Jew in silence. They soon get to a small hut. The Comte and two other men are inside with Armand, but Chauvelin's men are too good at doing what their boss tells them and let the men get away. In the hut, Chauvelin finds a letter from the Scarlet Pimpernel that says the Englishman is on his way back to the Chat Gris. He quickly follows, leaving Marguerite and the Jewish man alone. But not before telling his men to beat the old man for not being able to lead them to Sir Percy. Once Chauvelin and his men are gone, the dirty old Jew takes off his mask and shows Marguerite that he is Sir Percy, the Scarlet Pimpernel. Soon, Sir Andrew shows up from a different way, and the three of them quickly jump on Sir Percy's private boat and sail for England with Armand and the Comte. When Sir Percy gives up his pride and Marguerite takes responsibility for her mistakes, the two of them finally find a great and lasting happiness. About the author. Ortsi was born in Hungary, in Tarners. Ortsi's close and extended family included well-known nobles from Romania and Italy. Her maternal grandfather was a member of the Hungarian parliament. Her parents owned a big estate in Hungary. When Baron Ortsi tried to make it more modern by buying machines, the peasants rose up and set the estate on fire. Because of this, Ortsi and her family had to run away. They went to Budapest first, then Brussels, then Paris, and finally London in 1880. Ortsi had a good life in London and was accepted by the people there. The West London School of Art and Heatherly School of Fine Art were both places where she learned to paint. It was at school that Ortsi met Montague Maclean Barstow, the man she would marry. They got married in 1894. She released her first book, The Emperor's Candlesticks. Ortsi's first try at writing didn't work out, but she kept at it and wrote a number of well-known detective stories that were published in the Royal Magazine. For example, Ortsi's second book, In Mary's Reign, came out in 1901. And in 1903, she and her husband wrote The Scarlet Pimpernel as a play. The Scarlet Pimpernel didn't come out as a book until 1905, but it was a huge hit right away, and Ortsi went on to write several more books in the series. Ortsi was known for her support of the aristocrats and her belief that royalty was better than commoners. These views are clearly shown in The Scarlet Pimpernel. Ortsi was also in favor of British Empire and imperialism, and this comes through in her book, especially in the figure of Mr. Jellyband, the worthy and honest innkeeper. Ortsi died in Oxfordshire, England, in 1947 when he was 82 years old. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.